Now let's look at the first component of the cell, the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane forms the outer covering of the cell. Now to understand the plasma membrane, let's look at the security guard in your school. The security guard acts like a checkpoint for students to enter and for important things of the school not to leave the school. So in the same sense, the plasma membrane also acts like a checkpoint for the cell. It ensures that good substances enter the cell and it also ensures that important parts of the cell do not leave from the cell. Now the plasma membrane is semi-permeable in nature. That means semi means half and permeable means to allow. So it allows only selective molecules to enter and selective molecules to exit. Now let's look at an example of the plasma membrane's function. Now the plasma membrane during respiration allows oxygen to enter the cell. And also once a lot of carbon dioxide has accumulated inside the cell, it sees that the carbon dioxide exits the cell. Now what is this plasma membrane made up of? So there are two important molecules which make up the plasma membrane. One is the protein and the other one is the lipid. Now we're further going to elaborate on other components of the cell. Now let's look at two phenomena with respect to the plasma membrane. The first being diffusion. Now to understand diffusion, let's look at the example of a perfume being sprayed in the room. Now when you spray a perfume in the room, the molecules of the perfume intermix with the air particles and you can sense the smell across the room. So in the same way, to define this, diffusion is the process of the movement of a molecule from its higher concentration to its lower concentration. Now another phenomena is osmosis. Osmosis is a special case of diffusion. In the case of osmosis, we see that there is a semi-permeable membrane involved. So when we define osmosis, we see that it's the movement of a solvent molecule from its higher concentration to its lower concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. Now I'm going to demonstrate a uh, an experiment with respect to osmosis. So now I'm going to use the setup and demonstrate the process of osmosis. So let me take the salt and put it inside the hole inside the potato. I'm going to fill the hole with salt. And I'm going to do the same thing in the case of the boiled potato. So now we see that the interior of the potato is more concentrated. And now I'm going to add distilled water to the surrounding of the potato. Note that the water that I've added has not entered inside the potato, but it will only remain in the surrounding portion. Now we're going to keep this potato for 20 minutes and we're going to observe what happens after 20 minutes. We see that in the case of the normal potato, there has been a transfer of water from the surrounding inside the potato. But in the case of the boiled potato, there has been no transfer of water from the surrounding to inside. So we can come to this conclusion that the semi-permeable membrane in the normal potato has allowed the transfer of water inside, but in the case of the boiled potato, the semi-permeable membrane has been destroyed and hence there has been no transfer of water inside. So let me define osmosis. Osmosis from this experiment is actually the transfer of a solvent molecule from its higher concentration into its lower concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. Today we're going to learn the process of osmosis with the help of a box. Now let's imagine a box and call one side A and one side B. Now side A and side B of the box is separated by a semi-permeable membrane. Now let's see, let's put water in both the sides. Now water molecules are equal in both the sides and the net movement is zero. Now let's put some salt in side B of the box. Let's, give, let's name the side A as hypotonic and side B as hypertonic. Hypotonic showing more 
of water concentration and a low solute concentration. And side B, being hypertonic, has a high solute concentration. Now the salt molecules are too large to pass through the membrane. Now where do you think that the water molecules are going to pass through? Will they pass through side A to B or from B to A? Water molecules move from side A to B. Water, which is the solvent, always moves to the area of a higher solute concentration. Think of this water trying to equalize the concentration by diluting side B. So now the net movement of equilibrium is zero. Now let's look at the application of osmosis in a cell when placed in three different mediums. Now when we place a cell in a hypertonic solution, that is a solution in which the solute concentration is greater than that of the solvent, we see that the cell will shrink. Now if we place the same cell in a hypotonic solution in which the solute concentration is less than that of the solvent, we see that the cell is going to gain the water from the solvent solution and it will swell. Now if we place the cell in an isotonic solution, that is a solution in which the solute and solvent are both equal in concentration, there will be no effect on the cell. Now let's come to another component of the cell, the cell wall. Now we know that plants get their water through underground system. So in order to do this, they have to do a lot of heavy lifting work in order to get their water against the force of gravity. Now ideally, a plant cell should burst, but this does not happen. It is because they have a rigid component called a cell wall. Now let's look at what a cell wall is. The cell wall forms the outer protective covering to the plasma membrane. Now animal cells do not get their water through underground system, so we see that the cell wall is not present in animal cells. Cell wall is present in three organisms. Let's take a look at them. We see that cell wall is present in plant cells, fungal cells, and bacterial cells. Now in the case of plant cell, the cell wall is made up of a substance called cellulose. In the case of a fungal cell, it's made up of something called chitin. And in the case of a bacterial cell, it's made up of a substance called peptidoglycan. Now we're going to see a phenomena with respect to the cell wall. Now we know the process of osmosis and we know what a cell wall is. When we place a cell in a hypertonic medium, we know that the cell is going to lose its water content through the process of osmosis. So let's place a plant cell in a hypertonic medium and observe it under the microscope. We'll see that the protoplasm, which is the cytoplasm, the cell component and the cell membrane shrinks away from the cell wall. This phenomena is known as plasmolysis. So plasmolysis, by definition, is a shrinkage or contraction of the protoplasm away from the cell wall when placed in a hypertonic medium. Now the opposite phenomena to plasmolysis is cytolysis. In the case of cytolysis, we see that if we place a cell in a hypotonic medium, the cell will gain its water back.